You guys ready to put a ribbon on this thing, huh? Come on, you guys ready to do something special right now? Uh, I know. It's been a long show. We've had a lot of fun, but there's only one way to end an episode like this. And that is with a man that has done more new minutes than anyone ever in the history of the show. One of the longest, the longest standing regular ever. This young man right here, a force of nature, the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery, everybody. Bud Light is going to have a trans lady on their cans, which is great because it's really going to open up sponsorship opportunities for all of us. I actually got a call from a feminine hygiene company earlier today, and they're saying they want my image on all of their dental dams moving forward. <laughs> but seriously, Bud Light is going to have a trans person on their cans because they are tired of selling beer. Not to be outdone, Tinder has a new spokesperson, Ted Bundy. <laughs> Trump is getting arrested. I mean, he got fingerprinted, mug shots, and they even gave him an anal cavity search where they weirdly enough found confirmation that Aphex Twin will be performing at the upcoming coronation of King Charles III. Liberal parents be like, my son better not be attracted to women. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> that's all I've got. Wow, I loved that. Incredible. A minute, 20 seconds, no bear to be found. He wants no business going up against William. An incredible performance. Literally two or three of my favorite jokes of the entire night. Bud Light trans spokesperson because they're tired of selling beer <laughs> is just unbelievable to me. Short, sweet, whatever you said in the middle there, cut that shit, get right Who's to that. Who was laughing right there? Is that you, Ari? Yeah, so I couldn't tell. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> they won't sell like three yeah. more beers. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> 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 wow, he is crying. He's genuinely crying. It's a great joke. <laughs> Either he loves that joke or he just got threatened by the German guy that's uh, waiting for him in the alleyway. Remember when Bud Lights were calling them Americas? You could order an America at a bar and they renamed Budweiser America. Remember that? Yeah, like damn four right. Four or five years ago? Yeah, you had like, hey, one cold America, please. And that didn't catch on, so now they're going to trans. They're going the other way. Yeah. They are. Yeah. That's good. Trans can, trans says Matt cans. Mueling. He only speaks, fun fact, Matt Mueling speaks once every four months. <laughs> every <laughs> There's four episodes a month, so that's about one every 16 episodes. And he decided right now to take a stand and say the word, it's a trans cans, everybody. How about a hand for the great Matt Mueling, everybody? Letting it rip. Letting it rip. It is a trans can. Wait, that's Wait, not which, a real by thing, the way, right? Which, by the way, when you no, pull the real. tab, everything tucks back at the top. So <laughs> it kind of makes sense. It, I guess all cans have been trans the whole time. It's like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I love about you is when you were reading your notes off the thing, I know because you read it, it said on that paper, but seriously. <laughs> which really just made me laugh yeah. for some reason. He goes... But seriously, <laughs> it's such a funny thing to have in a speech. Yeah, I have a uh, disability, so <laughs> it's weird you bring that up, Sorry. motherfucker. Seriously. <laughs> I wasn't trying to shame you. I wouldn't. They kicked me out of school in the fifth grade. Why? Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, that's, a, that's a late April Fool's joke. So <laughs> what happens if you miss April Fool's Day. <laughs> you slept right through it. Got to bring him out on the second. Yeah, I actually had an inversion yesterday. I went to uh, San Antonio, the Six Flags down there, and it happens, I think, to like 25 to 30% of people. It's when you're on a roller coaster and when you're upside down. 
something happened to my penis and it literally inverted back into my tummy. So it happens to like 25% of people, but... Wow. It comes One out, out of four people. Does it eventually come back out or do you have to like do exercises? Huh? Huh? <laughs> No, seriously, your voice sounded like such a little bitch, dude. Uh -huh. It's hard to fucking understand, you asshole, Toss. <laughs> oh, shit. He's powering up. We've seen this before, folks, when he gets passionate about something. Yeah, I mean, I have a fucking inversion right now, dude. My thing literally is inside of me. Wow. Is there a solution? Have you tried blowing on your thumb really hard? <laughs> Yeah, I actually did try that earlier, dumbass. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> the fuck, man? He has blown on it for like 30 minutes earlier, dude. I thought it would pop out, but it didn't. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Incredible to have. Have you tried blowing into your butt? Would you want to later? Yeah, I'll do it for you. Okay. Yeah. But no, I haven't tried blowing into my butt. I think it'd be hard for me to do that. Yeah, Ari, nice suggestion, idiot. All right. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck is going on? You were being so sweet crying about the thing earlier, and then you're asking if I can blow into my fucking butt. What does it look like? How would I do that right now? I kind of meant if someone else would blow into your butt. That's what I meant. Well, that's not what you fucking said. No, that's true. That's not what I said. <laughs> well, be clear, dude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, seriously. We're trying to have fun tonight. Uh, I'm just trying to help your inversion. And word of the wise, don't go to the Chupacabra Cantina. I literally fell through a fucking five foot in diameter hole over at that piece of shit. I swear to God, I'm gonna find the owner and I'm gonna trap them in something. What? Yeah, I literally it was like a 10 foot fucking fall. I was at the Chupacabra Cantina the other night, right across the street, and I fell through this fucking like five foot diameter hole. I swear to God, what? I'm going to figure out where the guy lives and I'm going to trap his fucking ass in something. You're going to trap? How long were you trapped for? Shit, I was in there for two days. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? You were an eye for an eye. You're going to trap him now for several days. Yep. Yeah. Then you got his gold. And then what? No, I really didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> this is something William notoriously loves slightly <laughs> fucking Jesus, with the dude. guests every once in a while. <laughs> Chill it out, William. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm oh on edge God. right now. I have a fucking inversion right now. We got to get it out, buddy. What is your plan of action for getting it out? I think we're going to go to the clinic, the Planned Parenthood tomorrow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's a good one in Austin. I already... Yeah, I'm going to Planned Parenthood tomorrow. Wow. You thought about maybe hitting Six Flags, taking the roller coaster backwards. It doesn't work that way. I okay. did do that. Okay. I'm not a science guy. Yeah, I did that several times you yesterday. You tried it. You tried it. I tried it. it right. It what work. else did you do at Six Flags? Give us some of the things you love about Six Flags. Shit. I had a bunch of fruit by the foot in my <laughs> jacket pocket. Oh, uh, shit. That's pretty cool. Has some Cheerios what? in my jacket pocket. Has six flags. Man, my thing got inverted, y'all. <laughs> I have a serious inversion right now. I literally. <laughs> William, if you find out how to get the dick uninverted, I got a guy with a chest problem outside who can need yeah. to talk to that doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that guy. That was scary. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, oh my gross. God. Oh, gross. Oh, my God. Oh, <gasps> my God. What happened? Let's have some fun. Ari, oh. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Watch Ari Shafir Piss in a Man's Chest, everybody. <laughs> yep. Where's his heart? That's what I was thinking yeah, the whole time. Where's question. this guy's I can actually tell you. It's a good question. Where was his I'll heart? I'll tell you what his chest taught me is that everyone's heart is not where I thought it was. Huh. <laughs> I was just wrong about where your heart is. <laughs> So, William, what else are you passionate about this week? Shit. Final four? four? No, four square. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've been playing yeah, a bunch of four square. What do you mean final four? The final four, the NCAA basketball tournament. It's pretty big in America. My team's out of it. Oh, okay. well, who was your team? Yeshiva Mar University? <laughs> no, Marquette. No. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Happy late April Fool's Day. I hate Marquette. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't stand Marka! Oh, shit. <laughs> My shit's inverted tonight! Oh, shit. And I swear to God, I'm gonna find the owner of the Chupacabra Cantina. 
fucking hide up in his tree, do a fucking rope down. I will trap his fucking ass. The owner of the Chupacabra Cantina. Is he in here right now? Is the owner of the Chupacabra Cantina. Oh, this guy says he's the owner of the Chupacabra Cantina. No, he wouldn't have the balls. <laughs> Who yeah, not a little pussy like that. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like your ass is inverted, man. <laughs> Show us. I mean, is it inverted? Can you? All right, William. I'm kidding. So uh, everything is going good. Anything else you want to talk about before we go? I started swimming again a little bit, and I bought the Speedo on eBay. I love buying stuff on eBay, and I, f- I found there's this whole subculture of people. I bought this, and it ended up costing me $2,000, the Speedo. It was on this... Real hunky looking guy, but the Speedo is really cool. That's the main reason I got it. But yeah, there's this whole subculture of people selling these used Speedos on eBay. If anybody needed to know that, yeah, it's a really thriving subculture on eBay. It's two thousand fucking dollars though. So do you wear it a lot? Oh yeah. Do you ever take it off? No. <laughs> and I'm never gonna take that Speedo off. <laughs> Apex, Apex Twin is literally playing at the coronation. What are you going to wear? Shit, I'm going to wear the Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, William. Uh, <laughs> how loud can this place get for the great William Montgomery, everybody? One, two, three, four. I present to you William Montgomery. A Mississippi woman was caught having sex with a dog. Why is that news? That's not my America, Texas. The Dalai Lama apologized for asking an eight-year-old boy to suck his tongue, which is so weird because that means technically Red Band's mom owes me an apology. But seriously, in response, the Catholic Church asked if you could forward me his resume. Okay. I was just in Cleveland and I'm a little confused. They changed their name from the Cleveland Indians to the Cleveland Engines? So I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The bad news is scientists are saying weight loss during middle age may increase your risk of death. The good news is Red Band's life expectancy is another 70 years. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm doing. William Lights Out Montgomery. The golden boy. The gel blaster. The one and only. William looks like if everything went right for Milky. (laughs) (laughs) Don't I fuck me, boy. Uh, it's nice to see you, Sam. You now, too, buddy. an interesting fun fact about Sam and William is they worked together for years in Denver, Colorado, oh, as, yeah. as up and coming uh, fucking beasts of comedians. I was already up. <laughs> he was coming. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. 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 He was and coming on the train. I remember. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself when William came up here, how hard you would have laughed at William coming out if you didn't know what he looked like compared oh, to all the no. other people no. because he's another one of these interesting looking characters. This is actually like him at peak performance yeah. right now. Absolutely. Yeah, you mean that in a sweet way, don't you, Tony? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you're fucking adorable. It's okay. You're my favorite fucking Confederate general we've ever had on the show. <laughs> You got the knees out tonight, which famously have the faces of ghosts yeah, inside of them. Yeah, can y'all see the faces tonight? You guys see the faces? Whoa. Oh, you can flex <laughs> your knees. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Yeah, take a look at that, motherfucker. <laughs> Haunted knees, the rare treat that only William has. That's become a new thing I do, Sam, on stage. I just I run out of material, and I just start doing this. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> so seven minutes into your 20, you do the knee thing? Yes. yes. 
I'm sorry, I've run out of material, but... <laughs> William Montgomery. William used to fucking come to the Squire Lounge, which I hosted, <laughs> and he would show up with no money and a backpack full of fucking whatever beers he found. Yep. yep. Oh, my God, I'm so proud of you, William. It's no true. one saw this coming. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> It scared me. I remember literally the first night I went to the comedy store to sign up for Kill Tony. I had a 12-pack of PBRs in my backpack, and the door guy is like, let me look in your backpack. And then I just pretended like I got a phone call and hit him in a bush. (laughs) But I was that close probably to getting kicked out of the comedy store before I even got in there. And the door guy didn't believe you because they're like, we don't get Obama phone reception in here. (laughs) It is true. Back when William drank, everywhere was a BYOB tavern yeah. uh, that he went to. He and famously I actually, would fill Mountain Dew bottles with liquor and oh whatnot. Yeah. And I'm loving Hans being known cocaine because I'm back doing cocaine. I was literally just doing a couple lines up oh, there. Oh, shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit no more. Oh. Y'all know I be on cocaine tonight. Yeah, I hadn't done it in so long. I vomited everywhere, right, when I did my first line. There's vomit all in the fucking green room, Tony. I'm sorry. It's everywhere. Incredible. So we all know that you went through a recovery process to get off of alcohol and cocaine. Now that you've started cocaine, what's your plan? Are you going to give it up soon? or? No, I think I'm going to keep doing it because I think I remembered why I liked it so much. <laughs> It just makes me real talkative, and it's allowed me to drink a little. I've had a couple Bud Lights actually tonight, so I'm going to be partying tonight. And Sam and I, I think, are we going to go try to get some people out in the alleyways after this? Sam and I actually killed, what was it, four or five people in Denver? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Well, two of them were trans, so people. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, seven. Yeah, we would stand outside of this bank and just fucking Uh, bank people in the head with our bags. Oh, my God. We were so young then. I know. (laughs) We look great, though. (laughs) Yeah. So hot. Fucking William used to crash at my house because I think you were homeless. I was for a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He'd crash, and we would fucking read this book, and we would just read the last paragraph of Blood oh, yeah, Meridian Blood to Meridian. each other. Blood Meridian. Yeah. I didn't notice the hat. Yeah, I would get all fucked up and read the last paragraph of Blood Meridian. And Sam, you might also like this. In my darkest days out in uh, California, I would watch Martin Luther King speeches and just start sobbing in the bed, and I was like, William, something's got to change. <laughs> I love Martin Luther King, but it was nightmarish. It's wow. got to be weird, though, because uh, your uncle was the one who shot him. Yeah. <laughs> James Earl Ray literally is a great uncle of mine it's it's not good that you know his name (laughs) you're also from Memphis yeah (laughs) well Germantown this all checks out William how long I'm from Memphis no you're not I'm from East Memphis Uh why would you even try to say I'm from fucking Germantown oh so you're from Arkansas no I'm not from what I'm from East Memphis Sam you know this man We've been having a good interaction up here, and then you try to th- fucking throw me under the bus. These people, I'm going to lose street credibility with these people if they think I'm from fucking Germantown. Who's with all those fucking pussies in Germantown? We've been having a good interaction? What, you got a fucking toad in your pocket? <laughs> no, I'm high on cocaine right now, literally. I'm, so so no, I, I'm I love this. How long were you in Denver for, William? For three years. Three years. I'm loving this information that we're getting out of Sam about William. Tell us more, because William is the fucking Hulk Hogan of this show. I mean, an absolute superstar. Yep. We don't really get to find out anything real about his life. He tells us a bunch of fucking lies every night that he's up here. (laughs) Who, William? Yeah. No. Yeah, he has this very specific... Yeah, I never liked raisin bread. I think I've said that before. I fucking hate that shit. Y'all really think I like lemon lime starboard? I hate those fucking things. You know, you know that joke about uh, the whistling album. You guys know the whistling album. <laughs> I was there the night that he uh, first performed that at the Squire Lounge. It was cool to hear you. Night. Yeah, he won the bar tab. I won the bar. And then tab. it was great to hear you uh, do it here as a new minute eight years later. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, stop. <laughs> that, was, that was fun to see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Seriously, stop. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to stop. 
Stop, <laughs> Sam. I'm never going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think we've met William's match here tonight. That's one of the things you say instead of having an act, right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are really going to both fucking clap at that right in front of me, you pieces of shit? Fuck you all. Somebody get them out of here. I'm not going to keep on going up here with these pieces of shit. I remember the first time he said that, too. It was nine years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Very funny, Sam. Uh, you know, uh, can I? I'll be sincere right now. I saw William in Denver, and I said, "Bro, you're so fucking funny." And we became very fast friends. And I said, "You got to get the fuck out of Denver, move to LA, and now look at you, man." Absolutely oh. unbelievable. So true. An absolute fucking rock star. He's back on cocaine. Yeah. What are you going to do with this cocaine pro thing? Are you going to fucking try to clear it up, or are you going to fuck it? Yeah, no, I think I'm going to go back to my place after this and bake a bowl of Cheerios and pour little honey on top. Whoa. Do y'all ever do that? It's so good. It's very good. You do that a lot? Yeah, I've been doing that all the time, pretty much. <laughs> you... I get Cheerios, and then I put honey on top. <laughs> I'm not proud of it. I shouldn't even brought that up. I don't know why I brought that up. How often do you do that? <laughs> Pretty much every night. <laughs> why are you laughing, Sam? <laughs> uh, I just remember you when you were all fucked up in L.A. during quarantine. And you'd call me from the fucking porch of your girlfriend's grandpa's yep. house. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I would make phone calls. Definitely. <laughs> this <I> definitely <laughs> checks out. All of us, all of us, well, I guess we weren't in Austin yet, or else you guys would have had a lot of phone calls. All of us would take hour-long phone calls with William that you could not get him off the phone. He was coked up to the gills, drinking cheap beer. Yeah. Nothing made any sense. It was bad. I was horribly depressed. Yeah. I was in a horrible depression. And you depression. could feel his depression <laughs> beaming through the phone, so you didn't want to be the one to be like, all right, I got to go, because you felt like <laughs> yeah. he was going to kill yeah. himself immediately yeah. after yeah. you hung up the phone. So we all would take these long phone yeah. calls with William. Now he's happy as shit, absolutely thriving, making like $40,000 a month on Cameo or something like that. No, it's like a that. decent amount. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for yeah. your Cameo. Yeah. <laughs> Did his girlfriend tell you how much he's making? Because she told me as well. It's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. yeah. He's doing okay. Yeah, it's been he is. fun. <laughs> it's, been, it's all positive. It's positive. Yeah, it's positive. It's generally positive. <laughs> yeah. You gonna keep doing the cameo? You ever gonna? I think I'm never gonna stop doing the cameo because I literally bought a five million dollar fucking house, so I gotta keep doing the cameo. Wow, a five million dollar house. Yeah, the banker told me not to do it, but I don't give a shit anymore. Oh shit, William. Do you <laughs> Do you remember when your brother like died for four minutes? Yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got QB sneaked, and I was like, Selden, what does QB sneaking mean? He said, when somebody gives you a Xanax bar when they put it in your beer, and yeah, he died at the University of Tennessee. Yeah. But then they brought Luckily, him back. they brought him back to life. <laughs> yeah. so it was... And the next day, you showed me a picture of him in line at a Moe's burrito, right? In his hospital scrubs. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sweet is, Zelda Montgomery, my brother. <laughs> this is incredible. This might be, uh, you know, William has been on the, every single episode of this show for five years, and I think we found out more about him in, in this last 12 minutes than we did in the five years before yeah. that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how loud can this place get for William Montgomery? <laughs> Okay, shut it down. <laughs> the other day, they added another letter to LGBTQ and then added a mathematical sign. I'm sorry, are we talking about sexual orientations or my Wi-Fi password? <laughs> Uh, 
I was driving yesterday and noticed a flag at half mast, so I did a little research to see what had happened, and oh boy, did y'all realize Steve Irwin was dead? <laughs> y'all know I be missing Crocodile Dundee! So I'm coming out with a new television show. It's pretty much just like Shark Tank, but the sharks are actual sharks and the tank is filled with water. <laughs> Soon Narcan will be available over the counter and I just have to say, I can't wait to overdose on that shit. <laughs> All righty, that's my time. Wow. How powerful. Coming out to a standing ovation. An extremely electric response from the audience who knows you, who loves you so much so that you had to tell them to shut it down <laughs> so that you could start your set. Absolutely incredible. Jokes the whole way through that only William could write and read off of a note card. Absolutely incredible performance. The electricity is flowing. He's eyeballing the audience. We've seen this before, folks. We've seen him. He is in his element. This is him in the zone. This is his house. He closes every episode. This is the spot that we are in right now. Oh, he just snapped yeah, out of it. Yeah, I snapped out of it. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> wow. I mean, you were in it there for a second. How do you feel, William? An unbelievable set. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing, for the first time tomorrow night, two shows in Nashville, a rare longer set. So, Tony, I have uh, been super on edge this whole past week, and the only thing getting me through it, honestly, I mean, my stress level has been through the loo... Th th through the loo? <laughs> it's been through the loo. Through, through the, the loo. The loo. Tony, it's can a, I... It's in, a little, it's in a little city called Paris, France. <laughs> But Tony, there's only been one thing getting me through. Can I play you a song? I've, I wrote a song that's really just helped me get through this past week, the anticipation I, we, leading up till tomorrow. I mean, amazing. For a guy that has done more sets on this show, brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose and Gel Blaster, than anybody else. Be careful at the fucking Yellow Rose. I almost got stabbed there the other night. Oh, wow. No, I'm kidding. You are a wild boy. Now, we have seen more sets out of you than any other human in the history of the show, and somehow you come out guns a blazing every week. This is special. You've literally never played music for us before. This is unbelievable what's happening. Are you going to sing as well, or do you just play the keyboard? Well, no, Tony, again, I am just so horribly on edge about the coming shows tomorrow night, and the only thing... Two sold-out shows in his hometown of Nashville at the one of truly the best comedy clubs in the world. See? It should be... Hold on. All right. They can't hear the song. You, you, don't, you don't want them to play along with you? No, I've spent a lot of fucking time on this song. You can't hear it when y'all are playing. Okay.
actually not bad at all. <laughs> Let's take it back to the 18th century, folks. So he's doing this. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you have to do when you only have 25 minutes of material and you have to do an hour long set in Nashville tomorrow night. Yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of this. Fuck you, Nashville! <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, Adam, can you do one of those movie things for me? Please. Oh. That was so I, I thought you never wow. asked. Wow, everybody wants a Kino. Can we get some of that cinematic lighting you had earlier? Let's see how it goes. By the way, William fucking murdered all weekend with Harlan Williams. This guy's going to be a, a future <laughs> legend. Oh, fun. Future legend right here. I'm so fun watching you, man. You guys, it here great on Kill Tony, you. you've literally gotten to watch a fucking absolute sloppy mess turn into a fucking cold-blooded assassin. Okay, what do you want to do? What do you want the, Do you want me just No, to... I'm still a sloppy mess. Yes, I'm back on Viagra. <laughs> oh! Right, we'll find some music right there, I guess. <laughs> Can we dim the lights on William again? Wait. Get a little spotlight action You're, going? What are you back on? I'm back on Viagra, dude. I have a penis thing. This summer, this summer, one man was looking to fix his penis thing. <laughs> Y'all know I need help with my thing. <laughs> He needed help with his thing, and help was on the way. There's something really wrong down there with my thing. Nobody could quite identify what was wrong with his thing, but he was determined to solve the mystery. Yeah, I mean, it's getting to be a real problem. There's warts, there's... TMI. His doc... Not... Go ahead. But... <laughs> But I'm optimistic now that I'm back on Viagra. The glass was half full because Viagra had saved the day and hopefully his relationship. But who knows? Laura Dern stars as William Montgomery in <laughs> My Thing. My friend. <laughs> wow. Wow. I've been literally crying for like eight minutes up here. This is in, an incredible performance tonight, William. And I love Laura Dern. It's so fun you said Laura Dern. I love Jurassic and Jurassic Park. <laughs> Was she in Jurassic Park? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a well-rounded, <laughs> unbelievable performance by the big red machine himself. Is this keyboard thing something that you're thinking about doing more often? Well, it's something I did, I don't know, 15 years ago probably. And then my old one broke. So I actually got this one on eBay. And then I was worried it wasn't going to come in by, uh, by today pretty much since I'm leaving tomorrow. So I bought another one on eBay. So when I got back to my apartment earlier, I had two of these things <laughs> on my door. And they're each fucking $700 a piece. I mean, this is a collector's. No, I'm kidding. But this one has a jingle inside. But yeah, I have two of these fucking things now. Wow. So now I have three of these. So it's, so it's going to be a thing. I'm going to start maybe exclusively using that. So wow. we'll see. That is very exciting. I'm sure a lot of the fans out there... Oh, oh they're already covering your song. Oh, these is on his. It's song. already I not as not. good. Y'all don't even need to try. You, do you know how to play the song that he played? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> hey, what? It was more than that. <laughs> I 
I can't even try. Come on, it's William. William, you, William, you think they're ever, you think they're ever gonna stop? Uh, I don't think they're ever gonna stop because they're not as good at it. Who's better than you? Man, nobody's better than me, especially now that I'm on Viagra. How much do you love Viagra? I actually hate it. It's a really, oh. it's a struggle in my life. I have a really big problem with it. So it's my blood pressure really high. His blood pressure was out of control. <laughs> but I love Viagra, so. But he was addicted to the game. <laughs> Stuck in my head. How about one more time for one of the by far legends of Kill Tony, William Montgomery. Crushing, healthy, touring, selling out everywhere. Opening for all the greats, doing his own thing. The Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. Tony, first of all, standing back there, why are you talking about your mama like that, man? <laughs> Tell us something interesting about you that we would be, uh... F Shut up, dude, you fucking Shane? idiot. Look at me, look at me. You're a stupid fucking idiot. Shut up. Don't say anything else. Or else yeah, there they come. That guy, knows how to, that guy knows how to kick. That guy knows how to kick. Shut the fuck up. Go to the creek in the cave and yell at people on stage. <laughs> or sign up for the show, you fucking coward. <laughs> but don't yell at him. You're not part of this. Mom, tell this guy to go fuck himself. Science says no <laughs> heckling. You get it? All right, there you go. T tell, him to, tell him to go fuck himself. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say. Go fuck yourself. There you go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Biden had a press conference to announce he's running for re-election. When asked at the press conference about the threat from China, Biden responded, I like strawberry ice cream better than vanilla. <laughs> SpaceX launched the largest rocket in history yesterday and it exploded two minutes into the flight with the explosion being described as a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Weirdly enough, back when I was drinking, I too had a rapid, unscheduled disassembly when I ran into a fucking group of people at a school. <laughs> Have you ever watched Forensic Files and halfway through think to yourself, wait, why do the people, are, why are they talking like that? Have we been in Australia this whole time? <laughs> I'm disappointed that nothing is being done to address the problem of women saying they identify as men and then dominating men's spo sport. God damn it! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm on a bunch of spice right now! <laughs> I'm disappointed that nothing is being done to address the problem of women saying they identify as men and then dominating men's sports. Oh, right, that ain't ever gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my time. Wow. Holy smokes. The Big Red Machine, the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the man, the myth, the legend, the synthesizer, swinger. Tony, I'm honestly, I am nervous up here right now. I don't think I've ever met your sweet mama. I think you did. It was back in your drinking days. and uh, But... I think oh, yeah, know. I remember Red Band was there. It got real hot up in that fucking hotel room. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. How dare you. How dare you. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. I might cut you up. Whoa, what the fuck does that mean? 
My mom's talking about witchcraft. Tony, do something about your mom, man. Wait, what? Do something about your mom. What did she just say? She just roasted you, dude. You just got roasted. Some weird horoscope joke or something like that. I don't know. No, no, no. I don't remember. You're killing it, mom. You're you're doing great. Uh, so, William, how did this week go for you? An incredible set. What was the Forensic Files joke supposed to be? What happened? So I was watching Forensic Files the other night, uh, laying in a hotel bed, and halfway through, I'm paying more attention, and I'm like, why are they talking like that? What is that accent? And I was like, oh, they must be in Australia. This is an Australian Forensic Files, and I just... Why did it sound Australian? Because they were in Australia. They were in Australia. Oh, the case. and I just assumed they were in America like they normally always are when I'm watching Forensic Files. But oh. this was a rare Australian so, episode. So for that joke to work, we literally need to be sitting with you watching the episode. Yeah, it was so funny when I thought of it to myself the other night. I was like, I have to just say this because I thought it was so funny. I was laughing to myself. I was yeah. like, you dumbass. How did you not realize they're in Australia this whole time? There's beaches. There's sharks. Yeah. Ian, it's nice to see you. Why couldn't I be on your podcast? My, I want you to be on the podcast. My producers made a mistake. They, they fucking booked it and I went around them. Because I was horrified. I was thinking it was just Moon Tower people because no. Moon Tower people and I, they found out I was the person sending their offices. I was sending them these very cryptic ciphers. Um, <laughs> they know I'm fucking after them, I think, so I was pretty fucking sure that's why I wasn't allowed on your podcast. And yeah, if you work up in those offices, you're going to keep on getting the ciphers. Because I know for a fact you didn't want me on fucking Ian's podcast. You pieces of shit. I'm not stupid. <laughs> What do the ciphers say? If, you, if we were to decode them, what do yeah, the things what they say? say? It's like word searches. Like you can circle like <laughs> hot dog or violin. But if you do the, the letters in the word searches, that's what I'm calling the ciphers. You have to, you can figure out stuff just in, the, in those words. <laughs> okay. What else has been going on? You sold out Phoenix, Arizona this week, a 700-seat comedy club, the great yeah. stand-up live. It was fun with David oh, and his sick. opener and somebody else. It was exciting to be the only white guy in the whole crew of the comedy show. Right, right. It well, was fun. It was a lot of fun. What David was going on in the people? green room? Being the only white guy in a green room, uh, what was that like? What was going on? I was smoking a bunch of weed, and at one point, David had said, okay, come back out there after my set, and we'll roast people together, and I felt really good about my set, and then I get real high, and I think, wait, David's specialty is roasting. What the fuck? Is he setting me up for a trap right now? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? is going on right here so that I was horrified about going up there but I was texting him and he was looking at his phone so I was able to communicate and I didn't have to go out there so oh. things were pretty good hell yeah all right so you just didn't do it <laughs> correct <laughs> <laughs> what a chicken luckily David loves working with chicken so uh <laughs> He does. That was a funny Django Unchained joke he did about your accent. That was a funny accent you did. All right, yeah, that was 45 minutes ago, William. Thank you for reminding us of funny stuff that happened earlier in the show and podcasts that you haven't been on while being on a podcast, talking about not doing some other podcast. That's uh, a lot of podcast talk. <laughs> Hold on, I get fused, Tony. That's a bunch of podcast talk. You love doing podcasts? Yeah, I mean, I've been loving it. I just shouldn't have smoked all this fucking spice tonight. But, Tony, I actually started playing the board game Mousetrap, and I happened to lose. I lost one of the pieces. It's like the, the net piece. I've lost that, so I tried to set up Mousetrap, and then I can't do it. <laughs> then I can't play Mousetrap no more. Oh, shit. And I swear to God, I'm going to keep on sending the ciphers to the office. I knew for a fact, when you said, oh, you're off the podcast, I thought, oh, it's the fucking people up in those Moon Tower offices. They don't want me around. 
I wonder why. <laughs> William, I think you, William, I. What the fuck did you just say to me, man? I can't play a mascot this week, man. Try to watch for Wednesday Files, man. I get dizzy up here, man. Are you ever gonna stop s sending? Oh, now I gotta stop sending cipher. No, I swear to God, I'm never gonna fucking. No synthesizer tonight, huh? No, I think I might bring it back next week. It helped me in Nashville and Phoenix. I did probably 20 minutes of synthesizers for my 30-minute <laughs> long sets. So it's making me feel like I can get really close to uh, to really headlining. If I'm doing like 25 minutes of the synthesizer, I think I'm finally gonna be able to do it. Tony. Hell yeah. Absolutely. I'm excited. Absolutely. Synthesizing, ciphering, you've got it all going on. Ooh. <laughs> you keep looking at Ian in a very interesting way. Yes, because I was so horrified when I got the message that now I'm not on the pot. That's all I've been thinking about, man. <laughs> Sit on my lap. I want to apologize. <laughs> Let's go find your mousetrap. <laughs> you want to find too. your mousetrap? Yeah, I want to find my mousetrap. Would that bring you a lot of joy if we found your mousetrap? Yeah, if we you. find my mousetrap, I'm going to be so excited. How, how excited would you be if we found the net, the missing piece of your mousetrap? I'd finally be able to play mousetrap again. <laughs> I'd finally be able to play again. I'm sweating. And you love mousetrap. And I love it. <laughs> how much do you love it? Man, you know I love Mastro. <laughs> You're running out of energy, aren't you? You're like a little sleepy baby right now. Yeah, I'm really tired, You're Tony. All, a little tuckered out, huh? I'm really tired right now, Tony. You and are. your mom's here, and she's been making me nervous this whole time. We're really... Uh... Why? Why is I my mom know. making me nervous? I didn't remember meeting you before. I didn't meet you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think we met. No, I didn't meet you. I you, wouldn't forget. Yeah, she wouldn't forget. She <laughs> steal trap memory. Anyhow, I took your mouse trap piece. I'll get it back to oh, you. Oh, oh, it was her. Wait, what a twist. What a twist. Joy got here today and took the time to sneak into your place and steal the net from your mouse trap board game. I heard somebody fucking up in the apartment earlier today. Was that really your ass fucking up there stealing my shit? It was. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, we're might, yeah, we might have a problem after the show. I'm going to... What would you be willing to do to get your mouse trap net back? Yeah, talk slowly. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe you could come back over to the apartment later. I mean... I think not. <laughs> oh, you just got rejected, homie. <sighs> that was like your forensic files joke earlier. That fucking... It was. Yeah, it was so funny when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and I both rejected you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wait, what just oh, happened? Yeah. yeah, I thought that's what was going on, Ian. <laughs> what happened? What's going on? What I feel like saying? we're in Australia right now. Yeah. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> William Montgomery! <laughs> This week, a Vermont school stated they will start using the term person who produces sperm instead of boy, which honestly doesn't bother me. <laughs> Imagine being a Japanese tourist walking into a subway thinking, well, it's nice they have sandwiches, but I need to get to 42nd and Broadway. <laughs> So I'm coming out with an updated sequel to the classic film, You've Got Mail, but in this one, the girl has transitioned into a man and it's called You've Got Male Genitalia. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's private calendar has just been released and it's a real who's who of perverts. From current CIA director William Burns to Professor Noam Chomsky, but for me, the strangest name that keeps showing up in the calendar is Aphex Twin. <laughs> Aphex. 
And also, Tony, I uh, I got a brand new dog yesterday, a sweet six month old long haired Chihuahua Gator. I love her so much. And Tony, I uh, I've I've been having a pretty hard time recently, so I've I made a song. Uh, just kind of in celebration of Gator is just sort of a celebratory type of song, so I would like to play it for you if you don't mind. I would love that. We're going to hear a song from uh, the great William Montgomery, and uh, Eric, why don't you put your mic on that speaker there so that uh, that picks up, and then William, you have your... Oh, you're putting it back there. Okay. shit all fucking night last night. He's got a half a standing ovation here in the room. William is a true artist. Look at that. Oh my it goodness. It wasn't that good. They are I know it wasn't that good. No, it was really good. Does okay, it have any words? Stop butchering it, please. <laughs> Butchering it, please. I'm not kidding. I just got a brand new fucking dog, dude. Stop butchering it. God, and what is that hat you're wearing? So, you wrote a song. Does it have any words? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a sweet little dog yesterday, yesterday. Sweet okay. little dog. <laughs> I, got I got a sweet little dog yesterday, yesterday. He got a dog. I got a sweet little dog yesterday. Yesterday, I got a sweet little dog. Yesterday, yes, I got everybody. A sweet, I got a sweet little dog yesterday. A sweet little dog yesterday. I got a sweet little dog yesterday. Yes, yesterday. yesterday. Wow, I 
mean a whole new level. Yeah! The Big Red Machine. Eric, what do you have to say about this fucking freak of nature? Uh, I, listen, man, I got to tell you, from where you were to where you are now, I couldn't be more proud of you. You are fucking hilarious. Yeah, you brought up the podcast yeah. again. Every yeah, time because I see you, you were a fucking drunk mess, Okay, bitch. well, you were very nice to me, <laughs> piece of shit. I didn't forget. <laughs> Pauly Shore. You were also being a little mean. <laughs> Pauly Shore. I watch it sometimes. Pauly, you've been seeing all the greats in comedy. You were born, bred, raised at the comedy. Comedy store. Who does William remind you of? You've seen a lot. You've seen literally everybody over the past fucking what four decades, five decades. You've been watching well, everyone. He definitely reminds me of a guy that lives in a fucking van for sure. Yeah, you know, like a guy that would live in a van, but not jokingly, but for real. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no. <laughs> He's very similar to Hans, David Lucas. All your guys are great out here. I love coming out here to Austin every couple months and seeing how great these guys have developed. I, lo I fell in love with him the second I met him a while ago. And, you and I'm going to be in your new movie, right? <laughs> guest He's... House 2, right, Eric? Wait, there's a Guest House 2? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like it's just yeah. sharks. It's during a... No, um... <laughs> No, he's fantastic, of course. Hey, I th I th when I asked who he reminds you of, I wasn't expecting Hans and David to be the ones. I mean, I thought you were going to pull I like out all Andy, of Andy Kaufman or something like that, but I guess he's like Hans. I like Hans and David. That's a sweet response. I like that response. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Pauly. Absolutely. Piece of shit. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Holy shit! You really got to... You really got a dog yesterday? <laughs> yes. Uh, wow. That's, that's she doo dooed for the first time earlier. <laughs> uh oh. Also, yeah, I was starting to get scared. I've never had an animal of my own, and she hadn't doo dooed. And it's like, when do they do that? And I was having to feed her out of my hand, and she's not shitting, and I'm getting worried, and I'm calling 911. And wow. Ambulance showed up. I mean, wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And then what happened? They try to get her. Uh, they try to get her from me because they actually saw I have about eight of these puppies in my bathtub right now. I'm gonna start selling little sweet long ear chihuahuas. So if you actually need one, I have eight of them in my bathtub. You have eight little puppies in your bathtub? Yeah, I went do crazy. You have, do you have a song about that? <laughs> yeah, about the ones I have in my bathtub. Yeah, the eight little puppies in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's hear it. All right, here's a. To close us out, here's a song from William Montgomery. I'm going to, uh... <laughs> In the bathtub I have got... eight dogs in my bathtub <laughs> Oh no I have eight in my bathtub In my bathtub in my bathtub, I have a toy in my bathtub. <laughs> William Montgomery, the machine. <laughs>